first of all, a bit about the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework. These are the, the two key aims of the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework as they are written in all of the SCQF guidelines and materials. Um, these are not ones that I've made up, but these are ones that we've built on. And these were there right from the very beginning. To assist people of all ages and circumstances to access appropriate education and training over their lifetime to fulfill their personal, social and economic potential. That's a huge aim, um, but a vision that we all um, think is very important and which translates into what we want for the social services sector. So assist people of all ages and circumstances to access appropriate education and training over their lifetime to fulfill their personal, social and economic potential. So again, thinking about education and training in its widest possible sense. To enable employers, learners and the public in general to understand the full range of Scottish qualifications, how they relate to each other and how different types of qualifications can contribute <coughs> to improving the skills of the workforce. So it's to enable access to education and training and to enable people to understand what, how one qualification relates to another qualification, how one type of learning can relate to another and ultimately how things can build on each other and how people can move across, up, down the qualifications framework as appropriate to their life circumstances, to what's required of the job, and so on. SCQF at the centre and above the SCQF here, these are the mainstream or some of the mainstream Scottish qualifications that are on SCQF. So qualifications that are done in schools, SBQs, higher national qualifications, and qualifications done at universities. And on the bottom of the slide, we've got other types of learning. And included in this diagram are professional qualifications, informal learning, which is what I want to speak about. Learning or training is locally developed, CPD, or learning that's industry-based. This is a generic um, slide. We use industry-based, we need it in the, in the widest sense. Now some of these types of training, some of these types of learning will be on SCQF. They will be credit rated on SCQF, but some won't. Some will be uh, not assessed, some will be um, not tied into other qualifications, but can lead to other qualifications. And that's one of the things we want to think about in relation to prior informal learning. Again, to recap, SCQF has two important concepts here, uh, levels and credit. The level of outcome on SCQF, there's 12 different levels leading from access up to PhD level with five headings, and these five headings are listed here. Knowledge and understanding, practice, that's applied knowledge and understanding, generic cognitive skills, communications, ICT, numeracy, autonomy, accountability, and working with others. And these five headings are what are used to describe the type of learning, the level of learning at these, each of these different 12 levels. Learning can also be thought of for SEQ in terms of the volume, the amount of time, if you like. Um, SEQ credit point, one credit point is a notional 10 hours of learning. So um, you will have, what was it, five hours learning today? Five and a half. Five and a half hours learning. <laughs> so that's how it would relate to SCQF credit. But of course, if you were to get SCQF credit for today, um, then of course you'd have to be assessed, or there would have to be an assessment at the end, and it would have to be quality assured. However, you can use the learning from today um, in terms of prior informal learning, in terms of informal <coughs> learning, to uh, document the outcome. I wasn't sure how this would show up. That's fine. I thought it looked a bit um, faded. This is a this is a new um, version of this uh, table. That you you will have seen this table. It's got the SEQF levels one to twelve, and at the left are school qualifications, further education, and higher education, and then the VQs. This one has just been. This is SQA qualifications only. Only SQA qualifications, and this has just been put on the SEQF and the SQA website. And what you have here is, and this is how it's different, is the SBQs, SBQ3 and SBQ4. 
4 are banded between different levels. SDQ3 is banded between level 6 and 7. SDQ4 is banded between 18 and 9. This is a, a new um, illustration of this uh, leveling. So these are the different types of learning, other things that you'd be familiar with, higher national certificates um, at level 7, and um, honours degrees at level 10. So these are how you can compare the levels, the degree, the depth of knowledge, the complexity of um, practice, and so on, that are applied in the different qualifications and different types of learning that you're familiar with. I said already at the beginning we looked at that diagram that's got the SEQ up in the middle with the qualifications in the top and the learning underneath, that not everything is on SEQ. Not everything is what we call credit rated on SEQF. That is, not everything is assessed and um, given different levels officially. There's a concept that we can use when we're looking at work-based learning, when we're looking at um, informal learning, and that's notional levels of learning and learning outcomes. And I've used this to look at RPL and how you use it for work-based learning. And again, we're thinking in terms of learning outcomes, the type of uh, learning outcomes that you develop when you're developing learning and training. Outcomes in the assessment of learner achievement. What will learners know and are able to do as a result of their learning? And at what level? So although it might not be officially credit rated, officially on SCQF, it is possible to think about all the learning that's done, the learning that you're doing today, and think about it in terms of the learning outcomes. So by the end of the day, you will have learned X, Y, and Z. And it might even be possible to think about at what SCQF level this would be at. Let me tell you a bit about the, the, the project, um, the, the project that I'm involved in. The SCQF project started uh, in 2004, and it's uh, directed, guided, steered by the SCQF coordination group for social services, and it's made up of various stakeholders who have an interest in education and training for the social services sector. And there's a, a list of who's involved in that at the end of the slideshow. Year one, um, those of you who uh, remember this, I was involved. I, year one involved um, in information promotion, consultation, and scoping. And at the end of year one, some of you may have been at it. We had a, a um, conference, SCQF and Social Services Conference, which 150 people were there. So right at the beginning, people in the sector were very interested in the potential of SCQF, and some of you may well have even been there. Year two, um, we looked at the policy and stakeholder analysis. Who was influential in implementing SCQF? How could we um, inform people? How could we influence people? And practical projects, actually practical projects to say, this is how we use the SCQF to support the development of the sector. Years three and four um, are um, involving me again in practical projects and cross-sector projects. Um, and one of my, my cross-sector colleagues is here today, Christine Mathers, and we have worked together on some aspects of implementing SQS. These are the, the, the practical projects that we've been involved in, one of which we'll focus on today, and I'll focus on with Pat Sinker in the workshop. The first one is the RPL SVQ pilot, and um, this we've been involved in with Crossreach, ORCA, that's the Organisation of Residential Care Homes, Angus, which is the private sector, um, the Action Group, Viewpoint, including Glasgow and Altrum, which is the, the body um, of organisation it belongs to, and Borders and Glasgow City Council. Um, and I'll say a bit about what this pilot um, involves in a minute. The other key piece of learning being involved in, again, in terms of implementing SCQF and using SCQF to support sector is a project which is preparing work-based learning for credit rating and that's been done with South Lanarkshire and Perth and Kinross councils and those are examples of work-based learning that haven't been credit rated uh, so far but are going through the process of being credit rating 